All right, so the lesson by Tony K. Bambara. Uh, Tony was really a, a, an author from the last century that really represented the 20th century. She was born in 1939 in New York City, and she died in 1995 in Philadelphia. She had one daughter, and they lived in Atlanta and Philadelphia, and, and she spent one year in Italy. She spent her childhood and teenage years with her mother and brother in New York City, and you can see that New York City influence in her work. She was, get, she was inspired, given inspiration to write from her mother, and her mother's influences were from the Harlem Renaissance. You can certainly see that play in her work. Um, she was not just a writer, she was also a teacher, an editor, and a cultural and community activist. So, um, the lesson. Oops, skipped ahead. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Uh, the lesson is a short story that was part of her collection. Oh, I spelled the collection wrong. Called Gorilla My Love. The lesson speaks of the inequities in the 1960s through the eyes of a young girl named Sylvia. Sylvia is seen as strong, bold, confident, sensitive, and proud girl who's very smart, but also a bit snarky. Um, and Bambara helps uh, create many other characters um, in the lesson to help Sylvia along. The setting is in Harlem and Manhattan. The time is, of course, in the 70s. It is given a first-person point of view. Our narrator, Sylvia, is Sylvia, so we see the world through her eyes. So we're seeing it through the eyes of a poor black young girl. Um, Sugar is Sylvia's cousin. She's another one of the characters. And the two of them have a strong bond. In the lesson, Sylvia stays by Sugar's side the whole time that they are in the, well, they're not in a museum. They're in the, the uh, a toy store. I'm um, sorry about the museum there. Um, although Sylvia is snarky towards Sugar, as she is everyone else at the end of the day, she and Sugar remain close. Uh, another big character in the story is Miss Moore. Miss Moore is um, kind of a new lady who moved in the Bach. Sylvia describes her as having nappy hair, proper speech, and no makeup. Um, they all the kind of kids and kind of hate Miss Moore. Um, and uh, she always is well dressed. In fact, Sylvia says she always looks like she's going to church. Um, and Miss Moore's interaction with Sylvia and her cousins in ways they found to be boring. She doesn't do fun things. Um, though I think taking the children to FAO Schwartz could be fun. Um, so let's think about some of the characters here. Are any of our characters dynamic? Remember, a dynamic character is one that changes from the beginning to the end. It could be a positive change or a negative change. So do any of our characters seem to learn anything? Um, yeah, some of our characters change. Uh, I learned, uh, particularly Sugar, who seems to understand the lesson Miss Moore is giving them. Are any of our characters static? Well, I don't think Miss Moore really changes very much through the story. She tends, stays pretty much the same. And some of our other kids that is mentioned as kind of side characters, background characters, they're also pretty static. But what about Sylvia, our, our main narrator? Does Sylvia seem to learn Miss Moore's lesson? Well, she's certainly angered by Sugar's response. What do you think? Do you think that she too understands what Miss Moore's trying to just tell the kids? So our basic plot here. Uh, Miss Moore is presented as an educated black woman who got out of the ghetto, but is now giving back to our community by teaching the children. She presents herself as a woman with an education um, but a commitment to the civil rights of the 1970s. She decides to take the children not to a museum or a university, but rather to a place that reeks of excess, F.A.O. Schwartz. F.A.O. Schwartz was a well-known toy store for the very wealthy in Manhattan on Fifth Avenue. In the store, the children see toys which cost more than a few months rent in the ghetto. The lesson was um, uh, sorry, that more wanted, I'm sorry, it should be more with two O's, uh, wanted to teach was one of excess, not access, excess and capitalism going crazy. 
Sugar seems to get this lesson and understands that only true democracy, the playing, that only, only in a true democracy, the playing field must be level, even the economic one. Sylvia, however, cannot get past her dislike of Miss Moore and refuses to acknowledge the lesson she is being taught, even though she does seem to understand it. In the end, she pressures Sugar to leave the group and go spend some money Miss Moore gave them on treats. So, things for you to think about in the story. What effect on the reader does uh, having Sylvia as our narrator have? Would this story be very different if Sugar or Miss Moore were telling the tale? Do you think Miss Moore's lesson is appropriate for the children? Would the children have been better off going to a museum or other place with educational value instead of FIO Schwartz? And what do you think was Miss Moore's objective in teaching the lesson against capitalism to these children who live in such poverty? Would it encourage them to get out of poverty or would it just incite anger and frustration at their situation? You have to remember what she's doing is she's taking them to the place where, you know, the Kardashians type shop. You know, the, this is a, a place for people to spend money worthlessly on toys that have no purpose other than costing a fortune. So she's showing that to these children who are barely hanging on, who may not even have enough money for dinner in a way that seems kind of wrong, that the situation would exist, that in a matter of a, a, a few minutes travel, you can go from a place where you can buy a toy boat that would cost half of the year's salary of some of their parents, and yet they may live in a single bedroom apartment with two or three kids and not have enough food, enough money for food. So this seems like a kind of odd situation. And, and Sugar's realization that her answer to Miss Moore's question was, can you really have a democracy when you have such economic inequality? And that's an interesting question to ask. Can you? Can you truly accept the voices of all citizens if some of them have a lot more wealth than others? So it's an interesting lesson to teach. And the question is, do any of our characters understand it? And do they change because of it? So remember to do your journals.